everyone to Professor Barnhart's Super Cool Math Show! Da -da 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 -ba -ba -ba. Just kidding, I just said that to uh, make some of y'all nervous. But, ha -ha! This is actually the introduction to the 1951 classic sci-fi film, The Day the Earth Stood Still. I just said that to scare ya. In fact, I bet a couple of you actually swallowed your gum. What you are about to witness is one of the all-time greatest sci-fi movies of all time. time! Of course, we are talking about pre-Star Wars here. Of course, I don't have to tell you that in order to really appreciate a good movie or a book or anything else for that matter, you need to put it in the proper context. Who was, the, who was it written for? What was the mindset of the audience? What was going on behind the scenes? What exactly was happening in the world? What are we talking about politically? What was the filmmaker's intent? And then from there we can talk about more interesting subjects like, is it relevant today? This movie was made in 1951, so let's paint a picture here. Wait a second, I wasn't ready. Alright, this movie was made in 1951, which means that the Second World War had just been over for six years. The whole world was still in a healing mode from its devastating effects. Also, tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union were starting to mount. Uh, the United States had built nuclear weapons, and the Russians had built nuclear weapons, and we were all pointing them at each other. Also, the Communist Chinese were invading uh, Korea, and so the United States went in to keep communism contained by trying to push the uh, Communists out of South Korea and back into North Korea. New and powerful bombs were being tested, all in the name of nuclear research, with fearful results. And due to the world's fascination with these uncharted areas of scientific endeavor, personalities such as Albert Einstein were becoming popular icons. Now, with the world's growing interest in all things related to science and mathematics, the entertainment industry had to change as well. And the movies that used to scare people back in the 30s and 40s just wasn't doing it anymore. All those slow-walking monsters like the Mummy and Frankenstein, they, uh, uh, they're like hanging out with Evan Costello now. So now we're looking for something scary, something menacing that comes to us from space. Mm. I think you'll find in your study of 1950s sci-fi that Washington, D.C. was especially under attack. I seem to recall that a giant praying mantis was perched high atop the top of the, uh, the Washington Monument and uh, flying saucers crashing into the Capitol Dome. <clears throat> well, I think that of all the sci-fi movies from the 1950s, this one I think you'll find resonates to us today. It has influenced so many filmmakers it is a masterful blend of suspense and drama and even light comedy. The cinematography, the musical score, everything about this movie seems to work together. But now we must give you one word of warning. Bernard Herrmann's musical score for this film is genius, but it is not for the faint of heart. For the music in this film, Bernard Herrmann employed the use of a musical instrument called a theremin. What is that? It is a very strange looking instrument. It basically is a wooden box full of all kinds of electronic doohickeys to it, including a coil that goes this way and a coil that goes this way. And it is controlled by your hands, but you do not touch it. You hold your hand here, and you hold your hand here. And depending on how far you hold your hand up determines the tone, and how close you are to it determines the volume. And it goes And it's scary. It has a super scary sound. It leaves you with feelings of dread and urgency. Now that I've had a chance to think about it, perhaps they went a little bit too far with the music, that the score is a little bit too scary. Maybe something more traditional, like this! 
something I picked up in high school. <laughs> where you leave me and go watch the movie. And then, when the movie is over with, come right back here and we will discuss more about the nuances of the film. And in the meantime, I'm going to try to make sense of this gobbledygook. And maybe we can also practice our math when we get back as well. Ooh, doesn't that sound exciting? So go! Shoo! Shoo, 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 shoo! Go and enjoy the movie already. Bye.